and hot, plus deplorable in sanitary conditions, and an unreliable and lack of drinking water was the norm for oil and sugar workers. So the working class was therefore forced to battle numerous contagious diseases. Today, 75 years later, in this oil and gas rich country, there are still squatters in shacks, vagrants and street children. No water for all yet. Frequent flooding where much is lost and thousands of our people are still illiterate. Many persons in Trinidad and Tobago do not have a proper water supply and are forced to survive on government assistance and handouts. And amidst these problems, we are hearing talks that our politicians will soon get a wage increase. In July 1934, sugar workers from North, Central and South Trinidad protested against low wages and unemployment. A few years later, in June 1937, sugar workers willingly joined these protests because they were exploited by estate officials as they faced unemployment or were paid starvation wages of 40 to 55 cents per day. The profits of the sugar companies during 1936 to 1937 were 1 million pounds. The profits of the oil industry 1936 to 1937 were one and a half million pounds. A local newspaper in 1938, The People, expressed surprise at the tremendous profits wrung out of the blood and sweat of the black workers in the West Indies. In 2012, a similar trend is evident as seen in the successful recent strike of Petrotrin workers for better wages. The closure of Carney 1975 Limited a few years ago, which left thousands on the breadline, certainly echoes the maltreatment of sugar workers who are powerless despite the best efforts of their union. In July 1937, the governor of Trinidad and Tobago Murchison Fletcher acknowledged that racism existed in the oil belt as young white men were promoted and senior colored men were overlooked. The black power movement of the 1970s helped to change the society and some of this have been happening today. I want to urge Python to continue being the watchdog to condemn any culture of corruption in Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean. All members of FITON must ensure that jobs are given on merit. This era of nepotism and favoritism must end. During the 1930s in the colonial era, the white managerial staff lived in huge bungalows. They relaxed in the exclusive golf courses. They were members of elite clubs and had large swimming pools. Today, in 2012, a similar situation exists. Wealthy managers are living in high-priced, gated communities compared to our urban ghettos. Each day, the division widens between the haves and the have-nots. The rich gets richer and the poor gets poorer. Your challenge, Phaeton, is to find solutions to poverty and unemployment. Poverty and unemployment could be eliminated and eradicated in this country. Your trade union members can be the real heroes in 2012. This year we celebrate 50 years of independence. And I want to tell you who are the real heroes of our independence. The true soldiers of independence. 
who were responsible for responsible government, the precursors of independence, and the true pioneers of nationalism were not Dr. Eric Williams or Dr. Rudronat Kapildeo. These true heroes were the labor leaders of the 1930s. It was the Trinidad Working Men's Association of the 1920s and 30s. It changed its name in 1934 to the Trinidad Labor Party. And also subsequent trade union leaders, they made representations in London and in Port of Spain. They did this either through petitions or violent protests. They were relentless in their demand for self-government. So when the colony, Trinidad and Tobago, was granted independence in 1962, the warriors belonged to the colonial era. Men such as William Howard Bishop, Captain Cipriani, Adrian Kohler Rienzi, and Tubal Uriah Butler were the real heroes. I want to pose some questions to you. What is Fighton doing to promote genuine Caribbean unity? What is Fighton doing to ensure the Caribbean single market and economy becomes a reality? Regional bodies as CARICOM, the Association of Caribbean States, and the Organization of American States must be consulted on local and regional developments. I also want to challenge you to intervene to deal with a stubborn and myopic West Indian cricket board. <laughs> Working class solidarity at the level of trade unions has always been fragile and shouldn't be leaders held accountable for the fragmentation of labor and hence its deficiency and weakened bargaining power? Fighton can be the catalyst in addressing the crippling divisions within our country. I appeal to all trade union bodies, especially at the leadership level, to recognize the urgent need for unity, as it was during the 1930s when unity was at the forefront. However, there were differences. Cipriani, Butler, and Rienzi were members of the Trinidad Working Men's Association. In December 1935, Rienzi, Butler, and John Rojas left Cipriani's organization and formed the TCL, not the cement company, but the Trinidad Citizens League. Later in September 1936, Butler left the Citizens League and formed the British Empire Workers and Citizens Home Rule Party. He would later leave the OWTU and form his own union. There was also the National Unemployed Movement, later known as the Negro Welfare Cultural and Social Association, with members such as Elma Francois, Jim Barrett, and Dudley Mahon. This group had hunger marches and in July 1934 planned a hunger march to Port of Spain to unite African workers and Indian sugar workers. However, the colonial authorities were very frightened. They were afraid of unity and they suppressed this attempt at class and race unity. Fighter must come and find solutions for racism in Trinidad and Tobago. Unfortunately, this lack of class unity was not confined to the 1930s. For instance, during the 1980s, some of you all might remember, the polarization of the movement with the Council of Progressive Trade Unions and its rival, the Trinidad and Tobago Labor Congress. This division has continued until 2012. We must learn from the past. Fighton cannot and should not continue on a separate path. I know you all have the joint trade union movement. I want to tell you all, whenever there are divisions, a government will not listen to its citizens. The 5% wage cap and the actions of unions as the PSA seem to have splintered 
the fragile trade union movement again. However, the 5% wage cap has also brought Matuk and Saiton closer together. I plead with you today to ensure that all unions in Trinidad and Tobago speak with one voice. Successive state administrations in Trinidad and Tobago have been misled by the illusion or their own folly into thinking that the petrochemical sector will always be our savior. But more terrifying is the fact that our non-renewable resources will not last for the next generation. Where does Phyton fit into this search for solutions? Phyton is relevant and necessary. Phyton has to ensure that our resources are used properly for the benefit of our citizens. Phyton must continue investigating allegations of corruption. Phyton must continue being the voice of justice. Phyton must condemn money being wasted on useless and trivial projects. Phyton must condemn these useless commissions of inquiries. I am glad you all condemned the Summit of America a few years ago. Do not restrict yourselves to be in the voice for the lowly exploited worker. This federation can be more proactive in addressing contemporary problems facing the working class and the poorer social sector. I congratulate you for attacking the high food prices and dealing with constitutional reform. I also want to see Python making regular public statements on the continued spiraling murder rates, perceived police brutality, child abuse, domestic violence, and violence in our primary and secondary schools. The OWTU, a member of FITON, must be congratulated for its SEN poster competition and a debate competition to observe its 75th anniversary. Teach our young people to be trustworthy, courageous, loyal, friendly, careful and considerate so they will become better citizens in their community and by extension our world will become a better place. I want Biden to encourage other unions in this country and the Caribbean to be the voice of the vulnerable and the disadvantaged the homeless, the street children, the physically and mentally challenged, and those affected with HIV and AIDS. 